So hi guys, welcome to Ustream. If you want to speak to me, oh gosh, okay, put it down, Lisa. If you want to speak to me, um, you can call me through Skype, which is Lisa Cairns 12, and you can send me a friend request now. Um, I do these talks every Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday, it's 7 p.m. UK time, and on Sunday, it's 5 p.m. UK time. And on Sunday, I'm only going to record the introductions, and then for the rest of the talk, I won't record it so people can ask questions without being recorded. And then on Wednesdays, I will record the whole session so people can be uh, recorded while they ask a question. I'm not sure if I said that. Um... I tend to uh, like questions about non-duality. I um, don't know that much about cars or um, planning permission or the banking system. So I tend to ask people to ask questions about non-duality, but it's free to ask about anything. And who knows, maybe I will know something about that subject that you ask about. So you can have a go. Have a bash. If you want to ask me about cooking a cake, you never know. Maybe I know. Um, so just do a bit of an introduction and then I will take questions. So if you either call or leave me a message saying that you'd like me to call you. And I will try to do it in the most fairest way possible. Which I will just make up as I'm doing. Hey, Andrea. Pandria. Pandria and Andrea. Is that the same person? Brain. Hi, Mara June. Hey, David. Dang, I was going to ask about planning permission. <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know what I know. I can never know. Okay, non-duality. I have some good news. If you like um, Kindle, 
and reading books online. Then there's been lots of people asking for this, but the Kindle version of my book is, uh, I think, on Amazon now, or it's being processed by Amazon. It'll be up in the next couple of days, so you can go to Amazon and put, put in Lisa Cairns, and you will see the Kindle version. It'll also be on my website within the next week, I think, as well. Um, if you want to join me at an event um, in two weekend times, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after, I have weekend talks near London, just outside of London, for two days, for Saturday, the Saturday and the Sunday. It's very close to London, it's about 30 miles just outside, on the west side, the west side of London. It's in a very nice area called Berkshire. Berkshire. Um, and then if you miss that and you want to see me three weeks later, I'm doing talks in Berlin, Germany, from the 15th to the 17th, so three days I'll be in Berlin. Um, and then I'm doing a retreat in Romania. I just came back from the one in Crete and we had such a lovely time. It was such a beautiful retreat. Um, we bonded so well as a group. And there were some really beautiful talks and we did all the talks outside under the olive trees and um, on top of the roof as well. So when the sun was setting we were on the roof. And then we did some talks inside as well. It's really nice, really beautiful. So I have another retreat in Romania which I think will be very beautiful as well. It's in the forest. Um, the swimming pool and lovely building and great food. And I think there is, um, what are they called? Like natural pools nearby? In the mountain? I don't know what that's called. Um, and this there's so many, this is such an amazing price. So the cheapest, so you could do a whole week retreat for 345 euros. And for an English person, that's incredibly cheap. That's like 280 pounds for a whole week of food, accommodation and talks. It's amazing. You couldn't even get a holiday that cheap. I think it would most really be cheaper than a lot of people's flights. But, uh, that's exciting. I've never been to Romania before. That side of Europe. Then the next event I have after that is in southern Spain. That's the 18th to the 1st of November. This is a two week retreat. Um, so, this is really good for people from America to come. I think a lot of the single rooms have gone for that one. I think there's maybe a couple left, so if you want to, I think you have to book fairly quickly if you want a single room. And then I have talks in Milan in the very first week of December, but I haven't put that on my website yet. So, that was the advertisement. And it's very exciting about the book on Kindle. Duck, 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 duck.
we're so convinced that we're this person that who Lisa is so who you you're convinced or people are convinced that who Lisa is is this form that she's actually a speaking independent form that you're sitting listening to and that she has free will and choice to independent independently move and is separate from all other ob objects this is the conviction this is also the energetic expression because you feel divided you also see me as divided I'm something away from you space so this space here this air is dead space is empty face and it separates us you're somebody in there and I'm somebody here and this is Lisa speaking this is her speaking and she's separate from you and she can choose to do things she can choose to behave in a certain way she can choose to interact in a certain way or do certain things or she chooses to sit and speak now but actually in the very moment there is just speaking happening just like in from your perspective even though there is no you but from your perspective there is hearing happening you're not choosing to hear you're not actually hearing there is hearing happening to no one but the, that but that energy of the of the separate self contracts that hearing contracts and pushes away Lisa and makes it feel like somebody is listening to Lisa but in this instant this is simply being heard and who's it being heard by who is hearing the sound of Lisa's voice who's seeing Lisa's face most of humanity are totally convinced that it's them and they are something which is in time but time can never hear anything so you who you think you are that walked into this room and turned the computer on and started listening to Lisa that's time bound that's something that existed in the past how could the past listen now how could the past hear something but that's that's what we're convinced we are we're a time bound entity and we're listening to Lisa and we have feelings and we've had a life and we have sensation and we have desire and we have free will and we have choice but all of that isn't here everything you think about yourself is ethereal what's actually here is presence there is a presence there is something that knows everything and that something isn't you because everything you describe yourself to be, everything you feel yourself to be, isn't here. That's past. So you can never listen. You can simply be an experience appearing. An image, a feeling, a thought. But it's gone as soon as it's appeared. It's not a solid entity. But it becomes so strong, this, this entity, that feels like it's inside the body. It's like an energetic feeling. It contracts, and it contracts the knowing. It contracts the consciousness. It contracts the feelings and sensations. And it makes it feel like something solid is here. Experiencing a separate out there, a separate Lisa. But all of it is appearing in knowing. All of it's appearing in awakeness. Something knows all of this and that knowing never ends it doesn't end at the edge of your skin or the edge of your seeing awakeness doesn't end everything now is awake everything is known everything is registered but who's registering it and this answer can only be found here who's registering what's happening
So does m the sound of my voice peer out of presence, outside of presence? Does it peer outside of this awakeness? Is there ever been an outside of awakeness? Yes, the person says. There was the last moment. But that last moment, that image of that last moment is appearing in awakeness now. I'll get obsessed with this. Does this appear outside of knowing, outside of this aliveness? Where is the limit to awakeness? To this, to this presence? Person's always saying, I'm the limit, I'm the limit. The body's the limit. The feelings are the limit. My ideas are the limit. And then because it feels limited, because it feels shrunken from what it actually is, this hugeness, this vastness, this emptiness and fullness, it then seeks to find something to complete it. Because it feels small and cut off, it finds, it looks for an object that will make it feel whole again. So it looks for love looks for the perfect housing environment for lots of money, looks for all of these things in order to not feel limited. But there's never been limitation, there's only been limitation in time. There's only been separation in time. What's separate here? You say, I'm separate from the sofa. But the, that's like a computer game. There's feelings of a body that feels a sofa. But that doesn't imply separation. There's an experience happening. And all of that experiencing is appearing and is known. And there's no limit to that knowing. Even if you said, yes, there is a limit, there's a limit of my feeling. There's still no outside of that feeling. That feeling is boundless. It goes on forever. It's such love. Even if you say, okay, my feeling of my arm is the end, it's also not the end. Because it appears in awakeness, and awakeness cannot end. Even your feeling cannot end. We imagine, okay, so I'm going to feel something else, I'm going to feel the wall instead. And so that's my edge. But just because you think that's your edge doesn't mean it's a reality. Actually, there is awakeness experiencing itself. And in the moment, it's completely unknown. It's not an arm feeling a wall. There is sensation happening that doesn't end and doesn't begin. And this sensation is a mystery. And then there comes the intellectual interpretation of that. But even that is appearing in this awakeness now. And that doesn't end. And then the thought pops up, yes it does, here's the end. Here's the beginning. But that too is boundless, appearing in boundlessness. Something knows that that's endless. The knowing doesn't start and stop. The forms are coming and going, the sensations are coming and going. But the knowing doesn't end, ever. It doesn't start, it doesn't stop, it's totally still, and yet all movement is appearing in it, and is it? Everything is knowing. 
we think I know from here and that TV is outside of my knowing but that's not the experience everything appears in knowing everything is known something other than the person is conscious and it's also conscious of the person that's appearing in it too and that consciousness doesn't start or stop you can't find an edge where consciousness stops and another consciousness begins you can't find a back to it as well, you can't find where consciousness starts you can't even find a consciousness that's separate from all things everything is simply awake everything is known all the feelings and the sensation of Lisa everything out there but really there's not a difference between the sensation and out there because there is seeing and the seen are the same thing this one sensation the feeling and the felt are the same thing I know it's really confusing it doesn't really matter if you understand or not it's just the tuning into emptiness speaking so because I'm not speaking from a place there can be a resonating with that, that emptiness that's speaking a knowing, a remembering so even if you don't understand there's the energy of it, the energy that's speaking from no place I don't even know what I'm talking about, the mouth just opens and bah, 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 and it's known because the sounds are appearing but there's nothing there that knows it so it's an absolute mystery This awakeness never dies, it never begins, it never belongs to an object, yet it's always awake, it knows itself, always. It never knows deep sleep, it never knows not consciousness, it's always self-knowing, and this knowing has two sides to it, it's totally empty and full of things at the same time and it's just currently looking through these body-mind mechanisms having the human experience and in some of those human experiences there's an energy that says me I'm having an experience my life but that's being experienced that's not the experiencer but that one that feels separate suffers because it's always because it's separate and it's always trying to complete its separation its mission on this planet is to find an object which will fulfill the lack which will feel that sense of being separate from all things so it's off on a mission to find the perfect woman, the perfect man, the kids the perfect environment to travel the world, to go to the moon to become lovable off it goes trying to get things inside it consuming, consuming, consuming and it never feels satisfied and eventually after a certain amount of consumption after a certain amount of eating the cake it feels disheartened by the game it can never get there it can never complete itself it can have highs, it can have pleasure but it always loses it So you see the computer and you think it's you seeing 
but you is being looked through in order to see the computer. Because in order to see this world, it needs a body to interpret it. So awakeness looks through this body in order to see itself as a computer. It didn't have an instrument to look through, it couldn't see all these. It needs the senses to see, to feel, to touch. And it gets so lost, and it's not awakeness that gets lost. Awakeness always is awake, but the human gets so lost in me. And it suffers because it believes it will die, that it has things, it can lose things. The true nature of this awakeness is total love. It's so vast and empty and intimate with everything. It rejects nothing. There's nothing which isn't loved, isn't supported, isn't held, isn't direct reflection of itself as that love. No matter what it is, no matter what appears, no matter how good or bad we judge it as humanity, it's a reflection of itself. Okay guys, so um, I see that some people said there was a problem with the stream, so if you do have any problem, um, please tell me, because I can't see so I don't know if there's a problem or not. Yeah, we go to the questions. Yes, the ball is nice. Thanks, Ramon. Watching you, I can see how very much in the moment you are while squishing the squeezy ball. <laughs> Hi, Yvette. Sure, you can speak. Yvette. Speak with Yvette. Yes, the ball is nice. It's Ramon. Hello. Hey, Yvette. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm happy to see you and hear you yeah. again. <laughs> I was. I was actually, I'm really sad if you don't want to speak about the bank system. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was listening to and I had a review some private session last year and I remember that I was, you know, I was, after I was listened to more and more and more and I was more and more depressed because I was here still here you know in my head yeah and uh, now it was something it was very interesting situation because last year in November I was really before to commit suicide but logically you know logically I was thinking okay I had everything in my life I was married I'm divorced I was traveling you know I was completely and after something something's happened that was like a, what the heck is this the thought you know it was like a, and I was kind of like schizophrenic schizophrenic I was lying in the bed and I started speaking to my ego it was very funny and I said why are you still sending me these thoughts you know that when I die you die as well you know it was, very, it was like crazy like, like lunatic 
and some things changed and I was in completely in silence, you know, when I said this. But anyway, I was I started to listening to you again and you said very, very important uh, sentence for me that there is a two types of uh, awakening. Intellect, intellectual, yeah. intellectual, and there is and something other is energetic shift. Yeah. And I was something a painting or something, and you said it, and it was like, huh, you know, and something since this, there is still like, like, like deep connection, you know. It was like, it is like. Now I'm even with with some problems with some things, and after big shift and and it's silence and everything is okay. And after back into you know to this yeah. character, and after out and it's so nice. It's so <laughs> nice because <laughs> it's still the gap between these two is tinier, tinier and tiny, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's like. There is only kind of like a trust that the, this life who is looking through my eyes and um, had and has experienced through my body, through my feelings, through through my words or something, mm. is is so light. It's, it's, it's just the lighter. And when I started to do the things that, for example, I broke up with my boyfriend and uh, I started just to feel feelings in my body without story and was like blink you know I was okay with something contraction in my bellies or something it's really interesting um, when 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 happens something that did you <laughs> it's sometimes so hard to speak in words about it <laughs> <laughs> Even in my own language, you know. <laughs> so it's like when I'm listening to you now, there is nothing to like. I said I'm, I'm just keep smiling, you know, and I'm li listening to you, and and it's like like everything together, you know. <laughs> it's it's that, that's all. And friends of mine. It's kind of like uh, there is something like that I started to losing some of my friends because I had a lot of friends they they are interested on past lives on uh, kind of like that you can feel energy yeah that and and you can kind of like predict it something and I and I was kind of a little bit observing all of these people and now it's like yeah it is mystery everything is mystery you know and it's I, I don't know how to explain it's like uh, um, doesn't matter doesn't matter because really life is so clever and so innocent that everything what is happening is 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 so clear and pure and uh, light. Even as you said, when you feel, I remember I put hot water on my hand, and I was like watching and feeling this pain on my skin it was like a pain, pain, and it was uh huh, such a pain, and this pain on skin. It's kind of like the same, like a, like a pain, emotional pain. It's just the pain, and when when you feel just the pain, it it's like it it's the same like the pleasure. It's really the same like a pleasure to feel pleasure. It's kind of like experience, and I didn't know you have to feel it or you have to you know to go through it. It's kind of like, but now everything is like. Everything makes sense. That everything is nonsense. You know, <laughs> something like this. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, everything so, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just really trust the life who is happening through myself, 
Ich bin so. And I'm really happy, and I'm really happy that you are, and I really love you for all of this your talk. Really, really. It's so, it's not only helpful, it's like that, that, okay, if I, if I use the word character, that my character feel that, Yes, yes, someone other knows this. Yes, someone other has had the, the same experience. You know, it's kind of like, yes, I, I'm not lunatic or something. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm singing on the street, you know, someone else. <laughs> so, no, it's just like, I just want to tell you a big thanks. Really, oh, really. Oh, thanks for pleasure. <laughs> well, well, nice to hear from you again. I didn't recognize you at first because your hair is different. But, uh, I'm kind of remembering you from when you speak. You told me that you are so intelligent and, and I'm not feel very good. And I was like, oh, of course, you know. And I was why I'm so intelligent? You know, the mind starts, you know, the exactly like you said, the, the toes like blah, 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 and go down, blah, 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 and go down. So, and when this stuff really, when we started to just observing our character, character and the thoughts, it's just the thoughts. And I went, you know, because really I went through all of these people, Maharishi, Nisargadatta, and uh, other, 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 the other people, but everything is within us, it's really within us in silence. It's the, sometimes when I had some question to someone or, 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 or looking for some answer, it's just like, go into deep in, into myself, you know, and the answer is coming out. It's really, it's just like very helpful to listen to the people who are speaking with you, you know, through this you stream and, and I'm, it's just like appreciation, big appreciation. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, that's really nice that they've touched you. <laughs> and I saw, you know, I'm still laughing because you are really good actors, actress, you know, when you do something, some funny things in your face, you know. <laughs> because, you know, I was before the same and I started to be kind of serious and now I, what the heck, I'm, I'm not living, you know, so why not? I love dance, I'm still creating choreography and I'm painting. And I start to be more and more like, Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'm gonna see you with the ball. You know, and I saw the ball. <laughs> yeah, I'm still playing with it. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I really like you. And thank you. Oh, with pleasure. Oh, well, thank you very much for calling in and saying <laughs> that. <laughs> it was thank nice you. to speak with you. <laughs> thank you. Big hug. Yeah, lots of love to you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Renate. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Lisa. Hey, James. Hey, Tata. Um, I'll call you in a second, Andrea. I see that you called. Just give me a moment.
Look, I'm sorry to do this to you, Yvette. I should have left you on the phone when I did this, rather than doing it after I've spoken to you. You're more than welcome to call back in. And it's really <laughs> lovely that you're complimenting me. Like, but it just felt really ingenuine what you were saying. You guys think that I can't sense everything, but I can. And often I just, I don't say anything. Because it's so painful, and I know this is going to be really painful for you, Yvette. Um, but I might as well confront it. Really, what you were saying to me then, then Yvette, was love me. Love me. And I can't remember what our last conversation was, but... Um, there's something now where... where I don't, your, your whole conversation with me wasn't those words. Your conversation energetically was love me, Lisa, love me, love me, appreciate me. And um, this is what we do throughout the day. We're constantly trying to be loved and validated by someone, but we don't know that's happening. Um, more than likely this is going to really upset you, Yvette, so what will happen is you'll stop listening or you'll find stories in order to reject me because the, the energy in the body wants to be appreciated and loved. We're doing this throughout the day with people, but we're not aware of it and it comes across maybe as nervous energy or hyper energy. And we're trying our best to say things in which we, and do things which we get validated by those that we respect or by those that we want attention from. Rather than this honest acting, the reason that people come to my talks and the reason that people are attracted to me, not because of what I say or because of the words particularly, but because there's an innocence in which they're spoken with. I don't care, I don't give a rat's ass if you guys like me or not. There's not, a, there's not this agenda, I'm not coming on here in order to be appreciated. If I was, I would be doing something completely different. Non-duality is not that popular. Um, it just is a happening, there's just speaking coming out. There's not an agenda to teach you something or to help you, it just is happening. It's just coming freely and that's... that. That's the true nature of everything. That is the creative force. The reason the human suffers is because it goes through this middleman that feels separate, that feels alone, and is trying to complete that separation by putting things into itself. And you can all feel, I'm sure, from Yvette's energy. And you'll notice it throughout the talks. And I'm sorry, Yvette, that you're being the example of this, but this is what life wants to speak. And there's not someone here that controls Lisa, it just comes out. Um, but you can feel it when people call in, when they're being ungenuine, and what you can feel it as, as a no. So when I'm speaking, you feel attracted to the talk, and then when the questioner calls in, you want to reject them and you want to stop them talking. And the reason is, is because they're not speaking naturally. They have an agenda, they're trying to get something out, they're trying to be something. I'm not really sure exactly what you were trying to be, Yvette, but you certainly wanted love. People come onto the talks, they want to come across as liberated, or they want to come across as smaller than me, or they want to come across as weak. They're not even aware of this. Or they want to come across as happy, or funny, or juvenile, or whatever it is. But you never want that exposed, because the game is to keep it undercover. You've got to get love. You've not got to be exposed for someone trying to get love. You've not got to be exposed for what the actual game is. This brings rage and hatred to the ego when its game is exposed. And shame. The game is, is to do it, is to manipulate the other into loving you. But you don't need to do that. Your freedom is your nature. It's not something you get. If your freedom is based upon what others think about you and what others feel about you, 
then mm. you're always going to be caged because their thoughts and their feelings towards you is always going to change. You make yourself so weak by always trying to get the love and affection of others. I'm not saying you're bad or anyone's bad or wrong for doing this game. This is the human nature and this is why you suffer. Why anyone suffers. Because they're living in this tight world that's always trying to manipulate love. It's always trying to spin a better story in order to make itself feel better about its existence. But the freedom is the presence, is the knowing of everything. It is that innocence. Freedom is the birthright. It's there, covered underneath this separate seeker that's always trying to find love out there. And there's this attraction to when I'm speaking. Not all the time, because what can also come up is jealousy and anger towards me. But, but often I think there is a, an attraction towards somebody that's speaking non-duality, speaking from not a position, from not a place. Like their words are like honey. That innocence is like honey, like when you look at a baby or when you look at the dog. Like where am I going to go with these talks? What am I doing with them? There is nothing I can get by saying all these words. Maybe you think I can get appreciation for being a non-dual teacher. <laughs> it's really not like that what happens when you're a non-dual speaker is you're confronted often with people that are suffering asking you for help it's not like it's fun and parties it is actually because it's the most beautiful insanely beautiful teach, uh, subject to talk about and I love it but I love it because of when that person collapses and it's recognized but also I love that innocence of just speaking, it's like creating art. I just sit here and ba 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 ba. It's the same when I write films or when I'm being creative, that creative force that comes out. It's actually the same as all of life when you're cooking, when you're doing anything. But I get to express that as a job. So I love that part, but I get no joy from people congratulating me. I get joy from seeing someone or looking into someone's eyes and them disappearing and I can see that innocence or speaking with someone and, be and, and beginning to see the innocence coming through or sometimes when I'm talking I'm looking at the audience and you can just see it happening like people are beginning to forget themselves and that you can see and they don't even realize and they're sitting on the edge of their seat or when I'm just speaking with someone I can see that collapse happen that's the joy. Not when somebody's saying to me how fantastic you are. Normally when they're telling you how fantastic you are, it's because they want you to love them. Not all the time, though. And I'm not opposed to that. I mean, it's better than boof. But a lot of the time it is. People come up to, t to m tell me at talks how fantastic I am in order just to get my attention. <laughs> and they think I don't know and I am a good actress because I sometimes do not confront these things because it's too much I'm, I'm sure a vet now is going through so much emotionally it's too much for people sometimes but obviously a vet this energy feels you're ready because it's coming out and often after those calls there is just a moving on but don't think that there's not a knowing of it here I can feel it energetically when someone's being genuine and when they're not. And that was not genuine of it. Watch it back. Listen to it. The tension in your voice, the way you were speaking. That wasn't happiness. That was a desperation for my approval and my nod. 
And I say this so harshly and I say it so firmly because everybody can recognise doing that. And suddenly they're begging for somebody's love. Everybody can. No one's going to want to talk with me tonight now. No one's going to be scared of me. Once I squeeze my ball. And I do love you, Yvette. I really love you. I say this out of love and compassion. But it's going to really hurt. But while you feel like a person, just move the attention onto that feeling and that sensation. And it's so beautiful to come out that it gets exposed. And maybe the reason why I hung up on you in order to say this is because if I tried to say it to you when you were speaking with me, there would just be a denial of it. I have to go for a wee wee now. Go on, move away. Come on, Cass, Cass. You can come in. Come on. Come on, Cass, Cass. Good boy, good boy. Just ignore Khaleesi. She's just a big bully. Go on, Khaleesi, away with you. Go on, take it over there. Now, if you're going to call in and speak with me it doesn't mean I'll have the same reaction even if you say the same words it's all about the energy in which someone speaks from it's a hundred percent what it's about Yvette well, says, I'm not upset, Lisa. I'm just surprised about myself. I'm listening to you and you're right. And I really didn't want to insult with my appreciation. You're not insulting at all. At all. It's not the, That's not the way it is. It's, it's beautiful, the appreciation, but it's the energy. Really what you're saying is love me. And you are loved as your nature, Yvette. You do not need my appreciation. You do not need anyone's appreciation or validation. Everything you are is divine, is the divine, is the goddess, everything. There's not one part of you that isn't, and you never need to sell your soul to anyone in order to get that, ever. That's what society's always told you. Society has always said to everybody, you are not good enough as you are, you need to work, you need to buy all these ridiculous things in order to be appreciated. I was walking around this, the, the, 
the shops with my mum yesterday and I really enjoy it. I love my mum's company. She's so funny and she's got such a good sense of humour. <laughs> Today <laughs> we went out walking and I was thinking about it again with my eyes shut. She's so quick. <laughs> she's so I was telling her about how this person's into positive thinking and she knows this person and, and I was explaining to her about you know how they vision they envision getting things and achieving things and that helps them succeed and do well and this person we were talking about had a flood in their house of sewage so their house got flooded by sewage they went on holiday and then their toilets brought back up all the neighbourhood sewage so their whole house was just trashed with sewage and my mum's response after I was telling her about that they're into this positive thinking and she replied well what were they thinking then when they got sewage all over their house <laughs> what are they envisioning visioning? it doesn't sound so funny when I repeat it but it was me and my dad were crying with laughter but anyway I went shopping with my mum I'm walking around the stores with her and I mean I shop and I appreciate glittery things and I appreciate beautiful things. My mum bought me this. But I'm looking at all the crap in the shops and I'm like, what the hell are we doing as humanity? We're freaking crazy. Like, all these things. I mean, how many different shoes do we need to produce? How many different clothes do we need to produce as a society? How much do people need to have in order to feel valid and that's what we're always teaching as a society and it's so sad you are not valid unless you have a car which is worth a million well maybe not a million but worth like fifty thousand pounds you're not valid unless you have the latest sunglasses or the latest bags i mean we're just insane as humanity and this is what we teach our kids this is what we're bringing our kids into is you always have to have these things in order to be loved. You have to work, you have to be a slave to society working 10, 12, 17 hours a day, however many hours it is, in order to make, to produce this fake money that we've all made up. And, and some people get more money than others because some people's jobs are more valuable than other people's jobs. They get more money and you get to show society how valued you are by the clothes you make, by the designer. By the um, clothes you buy, by the designer, but how beautiful your house is. We're insane. And we, we walk around these shops and we all know that the reason that we, as, as Westerners, can have so much on offer at such a low price is because we enslave other societies. We, we use the weak and the vulnerable in our society, in, in this world, the people that are desperate and we use them in order to produce us cheap goods and this is how we value people we value those at the top we value those with the color of their skin with the way and the reason that we value people with color of skin is so crazy like um Yeah. Because we associate white with being richer and producing more money. Our whole value is on money. We value ourselves on producing kids so we can carry on this workforce, this crazy workforce. So getting married, producing kids is a valuable thing. Hey, Khaleesi? And then we live in this mentality, constantly seeking. Even enlightenment becomes a new thing to validate yourself by. If I'm enlightened, okay, I can be poor, I can not be a mother, I can be all these things, but if I'm enlightened, I'm valued then. If I'm into spirituality, I'm valued. And this becomes a new valuing system of how enlightened you are or how free you appear. But you don't need anything to value you. Your nature, Khaleesi, is freedom. You are the goddess just because you're born. That's your birthright, isn't it? Isn't it? Look at her. Oh, look at this girl. Oh, yeah, look at you. You're the goddess just because you're born. Everybody, no matter how thin, how fat, the color of your skin, the amount of money you've got in your bank, 
the amount of spots you have or makeup or no makeup or your sexuality, your gender, no matter what you are, you're valuable because you are that life force. You are an expression of God looking at itself. Everything is that awakeness. There's nothing that's not God. Nothing. And nobody has to ever sell themselves in order to be appreciated by me. I appreciate you just, be just because you are. Just because you are. Look, Khaleesi's just licking her butt. Now, even in licking your butt, I love you, Khaleesi. Just because you are. Yes. Look at you. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Yuck. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I hope my mum doesn't watch this stream because she's going to see that Khaleesi's on her sofa. <laughs> You lick your bum, you lick my hand, and all of it's God. All of it. There's no outside of God. There's no outside of the divine. Yeah! Khaleesi's quite happy to say she's the divine. Are you? Yeah? Mm -hmm. You have another lick in there. Go on. You do your business. Okay. Look at her innocence, just an expression of watching. Just an awakeness that doesn't think I'm Khaleesi and I gotta behave a certain way for the TV. She just is. She just is. She just is. What are you doing? Oh, this is what you want. Ah, that's what she wanted. Nah, -uh, don't bite it. It's not going to be good if you bite it. Not going to be good. Not going to be good. Not going to be good if you bite it. Hmm. Oh, yes. So the fact that's happening is that love that you seek. The awakeness is the love that you've always been looking for. And it's not separate from all things that are appearing. It is all things. It's there. You could like envision it as it's there, touching everything, supporting everything, but using yeah. these bodies to look out at itself. So everything these bodies look at is interpreted through the sensory system of these bodies. So you could say that everything you see and feel and touch and hear is the external sense in a way, because there's no difference between that which is sensed and the sensing. They need each other in order to appear. There needs to be a sofa to feel touch, and there needs to be a, so a sofa to touch in order to know touch. It's kind of one and the same thing. Like there's no outside of the brain. The, the Mm, there's nothing separate from the brain's interpretation. But that which looks through the brain at this world is this presence, is God. And it's looking at everything. And that looking never ends. So you could say the sofa is looking, the world is looking, everything is looking. This is, this is the love that you've longed for. And it's not something I can give you, but you come and you listen to me because it helps you remember. Even though it's not you remembering, it's like a waking up that happens. A waking up of that which is veiled by the you. I got to bite it. Just like Khaleesi, actually. I am a dog. I am a dog. Duck. Oh my god, she just kills me with cuteness. Look! 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 She's so gentle as well, she knows she's not really allowed to bite it. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> no wonder she knows that she's not allowed to bite it. <laughs> okay, sorry, I got distracted. Okay, hey Diego, but I said I would speak with Andrea. Oh, she's offline now. Sorry, Andrea. Nope. Okay, so Helen. My freaking Skype not working, I'm sorry, but thank you. Huh? We freaking. We try to do your Irish accent. Oh, that's terrible. Hello! Hey! Hello! Hello! <laughs> I'm so sorry, Lisa. There's something wrong with my freaking computer. Uh, oh. It's just. It's, it's something funny. Anyway, thank you. I'm so sorry. If when you were trying to ring, I kept pressing every button. I was going to throw the second thing out the window. <laughs> it would probably be the same thing if I threw it out the window. But I didn't throw it out the window. Lucky so, enough. So, yeah. So, at least I was just wondering if I could ask you. Yeah. The last time we had a one, and uh, I was talking about some bloody head problem. Can I just, uh, just one second? Yeah, just one second. There's some sort of feedback that's happening, Helen. Is that, is it? Can you oh, hear that? Uh, it's not, yeah. It's not my television, is it? Oh yeah, television. It's your television. Perfect. Yeah. Just turn the volume off. Ah, uh, brilliant. brilliant. Are you just watching the soaps again okay. while listening to me? Uh, yes, 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 my queen. I'm guilty. No, 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 I, I was looking at you, I was only, I, it's, I had this program on about doctors, you know, they find things that are wrong with you and that, but I wasn't giving, I was giving you 70% attention, <laughs> 70% attention, it's a right answer, <laughs> oh god, okay, and sorry. I must I say, I, I say you're, look, you're looking very beautiful, I love the fringe. Oh, thanks, I just cut it today, I do my own, and sometimes you do it well, and sometimes you don't. <laughs> Sometimes it's terrible, but oh, today it came out well. Yes, I, I, I caught mine as well. I'm shocked. Um, right, the question is, the question yeah. is, uh, when we spoke last, yeah. I, I was on a, about a health problem, and you said something about that's karma for the body. Yeah. That the body's... Yeah, karma, yeah. Hello? Oh, my gosh. So I was just wondering, you know, seeing, like, who's karma? Uh, what what is she like? Oh no, I'm a joke. That's a joke. But like, what? What? what how, how can it be karma if there isn't so anybody? Well, know? the way that I see karma yeah. is the way that this reality peers is one thing to another, and it's not anybody's karma, but it's the body's karma. So, um, oh. so if your car, if you went and you drunk lots of alcohol, more than likely in the morning there will be hangover and headache. And that is what I call karma. But that doesn't belong to someone. There's no one that has ca karma. But the just like Khaleesi has the karma of being her particular shape, she has very intense hearing. So I would say that's the karma of the Khaleesi body. She has a very cute appearance. That's her karma. She, um, right. like, she's very fast at running. That's her karma. She has a very oh, strong de right. digestive system, that's her karma. I'm trying to think of a negative karma that she has, um, but I can't think of it. Oh yeah, well she has, she's, can be a little bit aggressive to other dogs, so that's the karma of the body. But it's karma's not good or bad, I see karma as one thing to another. Right, so, okay. So like even, you could even say that your parents put, put, um, bred into you karma. In like in the sense, no. if it's not you, but but you you received the genetics of your parents, and there would have there's a there's a a pattern that would have been put into the Helen body. Yes, right. Well, it's not okay. even put in, I, but the Helen body is that pattern, that carry on, that right. continuation of that energy. Yeah. So, so 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 it's not really the look of the Irish. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just said I will. I will con Yes, I will continue. 
Hello? Oh, Helen? I think you it's went. Oh. What you're saying is repeating. I wonder why, why is it doing that, I wonder. Because it is Helen. Uh, I should continue. To, yes, hello? Hello? <laughs> I, I should continue I'm... to listen. Okay. I should continue to listen and, and watch you until I disappear. Yeah, well, in a way, you already are disappeared, but it just feels like you're not. Okay, no problem <laughs> because at all. You never, I, I really you like never, you never have heard or listened to me. I know it's repeating, but you can just, if you just put the silent on the Ustream, then it won't repeat anymore, or just turn Ustream off. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying, right. Okay. But I haven't finished you with you yet, Helen, so just if you just turn that off, and when you've done that, tell me, and then I'll carry on speaking. I'm sorry, I haven't finished with you. Okay. I'm not sure how to how to go to the fucking uh, uh, what you call it thingy. What's it? Bear with, bear with. Okay. No seconds. worries. No What's hurry. It? I'm not in a hurry. Wait, wait. What's happening? What's happening? Wait, now, wait. Now. Oh, oh. I'm not very good at these. I have got talents, but they mightn't be showing at the moment. Wait, now. Oh, there you are up there in the corner now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I just have to laugh at myself. Right now. Or if Skype. you like it, if you like Helen, we can just hang up oh. on Skype. You can watch me on Ustream, and I'm gonna I'm gonna finish off what I wanted to say to you. Okay, actually, it's clear now. Oh, it's clear. Okay, so what I was trying to say is Helen is not looking and listening to me now. That isn't Helen. Helen can never listen. Helen is a pattern which is being seen by awakeness or consciousness, whichever words works for you better. It's not, the, the Helen's never experienced a thing. So it, it's never Helen, like, like that. what's listening now to Lisa is always free. Never been caged. There is an appearance in that freedom of a Helen that's caged. But the essence, that which listens and looks at Lisa and knows Lisa, is always free. Never was caged. So that which is hearing my voice is free now. It's boundless. It's never, it's never residing inside a body. It's, it's huge. It's everything that's appearing. And then in that appearance is a Helen that feels uncomfortable and contracted, and feel, or, or maybe not at the moment, but feels like sh she's looking and she's experiencing. Yeah. It's beautiful. Even though sometimes for that person that feels contracted and tight, and feels like yes. it wants to wake up and feels like it's stuck in a dream, even though it's uncomfortable for that person, you, who you truly are, has never suffered a thing. Wow. Well, that was it. That was all I had to say to you, Helen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. I hang on your every word. Oh, with pleasure, <laughs> Helen. Love you lots. <laughs> Thank you very much. Love you lots. Hope to see you soon. All yeah. the best, girl. Thank you very much. That was sweet. Now, if you guys, I, I, I'm going to start talking more about me talking with people. Now, in that energetic exchange between me and Helen, the left latter bit of the conversation, she broke and we began to really talk to each other. It's not her that broke, but something moved out of the way and we began to talk to each other. Now, you guys will find that that's pleasurable for you. How you'll know that's happening is you will... Your bodies won't be rejecting her or me. There will, there will suddenly be an in syncness that happens. I know that's hard to. Understand, but maybe some of you guys get it. It's way beyond the intellect. I'm just trying to show to you because why what's happening in the energy dances and what happens when I'm speaking with people is suddenly we both flow together. It's not us as in separate people. The energy just flows together. That person gets out of the way. They don't even know they've got out of the way because they can't know that. But that emptiness is speaking to emptiness suddenly. Oh my goodness. Look, I just, she just looks me directly in the eye. It gives me tingles because she's so empty. Look, look at everyone. Look, look at Not at me, Adia. Look. Show everyone your beautiful empty eyes. Yes, I know you licked your butt earlier, but I'm used to it. She licks her butt, licks my face. I have butt lips. <laughs> butt lips. Butt lips. Is it baby? 
you doing? Easy puppy, puppy. Easy puppy, puppy. Oh, she's so beautiful. My mum catches you up there. She just came down the steps. Pas bien, Lisa. They go away on their holiday tomorrow. So they're just going up and down the steps packing. Okay, next person. Dear Lisa, when there is suffering, deep suffering, trauma releasing and healing, what would be your advice to support the healing and also use it for one's own awakening? It would be nice to speak with you live. Thank you. Sure, we can speak live. Um, I think I've spoken to you before but I've forgotten your name. Spelia, it says. So good to hear you. Hi, Julia. Hey, Sam. Yes, you can speak. I'm just going to speak with Spelia. Hey, beauty. Hey, beauty. <laughs> well, Spelia, okay, so you're not cool, but I'll just answer your question. So, who's Whose trauma is it that you're healing? We think that we're... So these bodies get traumatized, so... Oh, hey, there's Belia. Hey, Belia! Is that how you say your name? I forgot. Belia. <laughs> I'm really bad at pronunciation of names. <laughs> so thanks for your question. I just started answering, actually. I wasn't sure if you were going to call. So... The question is, is whose trauma do you think it is? And I'm not saying that we don't heal the trauma, like everybody, everybody, not that that is somebody, but everybody is traumatized. Like Khaleesi is traumatized as, as much as the humans. Um, although she's got a pretty good life, but the, there's some things that traumatize her, like um, sometimes other dogs. Um, and when she was in Thailand, I actually have a, a little bit of a, a racist dog against Thai people because when I was in Thailand, that sometimes the Thai people used to beat her. And so now, even when she sees a Thai person, I don't know how she notices, but she knows. She she starts to growl or bark at them. And so, to Khaleesi, though, she doesn't suffer. And I'm not suggesting don't try to get over that trauma. It's so much more beautiful if you can get over it. I don't know how I break that one in Khaleesi. But it's really beautiful to let these traumas go. But when we're awakening, we get confused. Because, because there's so much suffering around the traumas. Uh -huh. So say if you've been beaten when you were a child by men. And so therefore it makes relationships with men very difficult. So when you try to have a, an intimate relationship with a man, there is a lot of fear that, come up, that comes up. Um, sorry, I've got lots of dog hairs on my face now. I'm just <laughs> And so, and and then because you feel like you're a person and you can feel, like Khaleesi, she can't see her trauma. So if she's living with a Thai person and feeling lots of fear and anxiety, she can't know that she's feeling that. There is just sensation arising. But this separate entity sees its trauma and it thinks my unhappiness, uh -huh. my unenlightenment is my trauma. But that's not actually the case. It's just that there is lots of rejection around that trauma. So you suffer more with the trauma as opposed to being happy. When you're happy, there's not a rejection of that happiness. There's not someone there going, I don't want to be happy. Let's avoid this. Let's get out of this situation. You're just like, woohoo, I'm happy. <laughs> but So with the trauma, we suck it in and we, th we want to reject it. We, we want to, that to go away. And we push it away. And actually, the pushing away of it by the person encourages it. It yeah. makes it stay right away. Because with Khaleesi, if she's traumatized with something, so say if there's a Thai person that she's traumatized by, I just would turn her body around, and she's forgotten it. She's not <laughs> holding on to it. She's just like, ah. 
there's just a simplicity there because she hasn't got the complicated thinking and she doesn't have an identity she's not holding on to it and making it personal she's not victim to the Thai person it's simply an expression of fear when she sees that and then that fear is gone when that that input isn't there anymore the human though holds on to it and gets into crazy thoughts about it it begins to believe that it's unworthy that it produced this trauma it's its fault like Lisa yeah. doesn't think it's her fault or anything and and lots of and that you're a victim to that trauma that that trauma is hurting you and that you're a victim to something external to you. Khaleesi doesn't see herself victim to anything. There is just sensation happening. There is fear happening. But there's not her there that's victim to the fear. There is simply a sensation that passes through. And this is the healthy way to actually experience trauma. Is that sensation comes up, it's really intense, and it just passes through. The human feels like in some way that it's their fault. Yeah and it claims that trauma and it feels victim to the external this person has done this to me and then it makes up lots of stories about what this person did to it and it holds it all into the body and these traumas can go on for years so seeing someone that hurt you as a child can then affect you for months afterwards you can feel shaky and nervous about it and there's a rep repetition and obsession about it about being victim to this person but when that attention changes from being that person with trauma to just the aliveness there's nothing external which traumatizes you because you don't feel like this body anymore the fear of the that body and that body are one and the same thing there isn't somebody that has fear in relationship to another person. There is simply fear that arises. And there's nothing which is victim to that fear. And that fear is a very natural response that appears. And it appears in very intensely and then disappears. And, and in a way, that's its freedom. Like, um, that's the healthy way to experience life. And in a way, that's letting the trauma go the person's holding on to trauma so the problem's never the trauma themselves the problem is always the person but these things are really intense and the person gets into really negative ways of dealing with life you know people hold grudges and very negative pattern uh, thought patterns around certain people or certain events and so when you yeah. feel like a separate person I would suggest and recommend always exploring the physical sensations. The physical uh -huh. sensations are much more important than the thoughts because everything you think is kind of a craziness and not true. Um, our thinking is always bound to opposites, good and bad. So they did something bad to me. And this is actually a really simplistic way of thinking even though we think that it has some intelligence. To think that there's something bad is a really if you really look at it, it's a really crazy assumption because when does an action start and stop? So when did badness start and stop? So somebody's action, when does it begin? And when does it end? Really, life is an endless flow of energy that started at the Big Bang and is a, a carry-on expression of that. So something that which we describe as bad is actually an appearance of that one divine energy that's expressing itself in this, in this way. And and you can't really describe things as good and bad we can only describe them as good and bad as a way in order to manipulate our environment and improve our environment it's not actually a reality so our thinking process is a really incorrect way to see life so I would always well you feel separate bring the attention down to the actual physical sensations that are appearing in the body and not give too much attention to what actually being thought about or if it's too strong the thinking then explore the thoughts and try to push the thoughts to the limit uh -huh. so if you're if you're experiencing a lot of hate to someone like try and push that to the limit to see see that hate and expose it for what it is uh -huh. like rather than hiding from the hate so sometimes when we hate something we try to push that hate feeling away uh -huh. and we try to tell positive stories or we say instead of admitting that we hate someone we try to to rationalize it by actions that they've done that annoy us and we try to make it valid what we're feeling 
And rather than just staying in that, explore what you're thinking, or more importantly, what you're feeling. Yeah. Because really underneath the hatred that we feel for someone, really what we're actually feeling is an intense vulnerability. vulnerability. There's no, there's really, hate is like a very surface thing to cover up vulnerability. We use it mm -hmm. as a defense. And really what the two core feelings are as soon as separation begins is, I'm afraid of life, I'm this small object that's afraid, and we're, we hate in order to feel more powerful, to not feel so afraid, so it helps us to survive, but it's actually not a true feeling. So we feel afraid, and we feel not enough, like that we lack. So underneath all these stories that we're telling, it's like a, a complicated system that's on top and trying to cover up what's truly being felt. And really what we feel is this separation, and from this separation, we feel lack and fear. And then we tell these hate stories in order to try and make us feel less fear. We try to, to stay in that to make us feel more powerful or less lack. That this person did this to me. But actually what it does is it makes us very weak and it makes us sick and ill. This compulsion of going into what we tell ourselves. What we tell ourselves is always trying to make us feel more powerful and feel less vulnerable to life but it cuts us off and deadens us and makes us ill and small someone filled with hate is so weak but they're screaming and shouting like a dog you know like a vicious dog that's trying to say uh, trying to be um, less vulnerable to its environment mm -hmm. So my advice when you feel separate and when you feel these intense energies coming up is to explore it. Is to rather than staying in the compulsive thinking to explore what's being thought. So if you're feeling hate, uh -huh. I can guarantee it's coming from lack and fear. So exploring that hate or exploring that intense sensation in the body. Because uh -huh. really there isn't an inside body and an outside world there is sensation that's happening that never ends. You don't actually feel things inside your body, it's everything feeling sensation. So if there is an intense feeling of anger, in a way you could say that everything's anger, because you'll begin to, to discover that that anger isn't separate from all things. There isn't somebody that has anger. There is awakeness that's experiencing it all. And that awakeness, that knowing, that consciousness, doesn't start or stop anywhere, and it's conscious of everything, whether it be anger or love. And that anger or love belongs to no one. You might have to watch this back. Yeah. <laughs> I've let up. <laughs> but you might be following my energy more than what I'm Beautiful. saying. I love it. <laughs> But the great thing about the human instrument is its ability to explore, its creative ability. We're so creative as humans and we get stuck in such dogmatic views and opinions. Even non-duality in a way needs to be chucked out. Everything that's ever said or spoken about the subject needs to be ripped to shreds and chucked away. Because there's nothing which is true, there is this innocence that's experiencing itself as everything. And it's looking through this body, it's looking through, through your body, it's looking through this body, my body. It's looking through all these bodies at itself. So this sound of my voice is a reflection of that which is listening, that which is actually hearing. Which isn't you, it is that boundlessness. <laughs> oh, that was really beautiful, that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, with pleasure. Even yeah. though it was me mostly speaking, it's, it's not. This is it's, mm -hmm. it's like an energy flow. Very beautiful. Wow. Oh, thank you. Lovely to speak yeah. with you again. Bye-bye. You see, 
It looks like I'm speaking, but it's yourself speaking as that awakeness. So even though it's a conversation of one, so it's awakeness watching from all different angles, it appears as if it's two, but those two aren't two. Uh, I can't say that. Hey Nick! Hey Jess, Jessie. Oh, internet is screwing on your end. I don't think it's my end. I'm, I'm near London, so I should have really strong internet. But yesterday, actually, the internet kept um, going down. But that was because we had too many boxes in the house. Confusing. Doesn't matter. Irrelevant. I don't think it's the send. Hey, Sam! Hi, Sam! Hi, Lisa. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear and see you. Okay, nice. <laughs> Thanks for calling. It's a pleasure. Um, right, um... Yeah, um... I just wanted to ring and um, say a couple of things. One thing, like... Oh, I don't know, it all seems a bit stupid now, but... <laughs> Well, just if you just say what the body feels like saying, like, yeah. even if you even if you find that no words come out for a minute or so, it's okay if we sit in silence. Just let the body do it. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of pain recently, yeah. like all through my back and my neck, and. Um, I don't know, I've also like had a lot of mental pain and stuff, but... I always see this as a really great thing, Sam. I know it doesn't feel great, but awake, waking up is a total shift in energy, and it is a painful thing. I went through years of, um, I say years, I think it was like two or three years of intense neck pain, and I'm sure that was to do with, um, with waking up and the change. Like, um, yeah. What it used to do was it, it meant I couldn't do a lot of things or if I did do things I'd get headaches and I would feel so out of it. So what it meant was that I spent a lot of time lying on the floor and I used to lay flat on the back with my legs up and my head on a very small book and for some reason, I don't know who suggested this, but it really felt really good and it was like the most comfortable position but it meant that I would just lay there and I wasn't... Before that, I'd meditated lots, but then when I did this, I wasn't really meditating. I was just kind of laying there because it was the most comfortable position. But it yeah. stopped me doing my natural pattern of being Lisa and trying to get out of pain. Your freedom is your essence, but what makes you feel like you're not free is this constant pattern of trying to get love and validation outside of yourself. And so that has to be a huge energetic shift, and that has to be in most cases, going through an immense sensation of pain. It has to be this breaking of a pattern. And it hurts the body. I mean, now they say that one of the most um, prescribed drugs, I know in Australia, I'm not sure in England, is antidepressants for backache. Because antidepressants relax backache. So you can imagine how much discomfort that sense of self creates in the body. Like, like if we're giving the antidepressants out to stop backache, it means that it's really connected. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It is like coming off a drug, the sense of self. Yeah, well, that's, that's the other thing, yeah. Like, I had, I have, I've had such intense pain, and I've been, because of the, my, my thoughts and everything, I've just been, it's felt like the weirdest sort of time, but at the same time, I'm also sleeping in a new bed with a new pillow, and I just think, well, maybe it's just that, and I'm just overreacting, <laughs> thinking I'm, I'm waking up. And, <laughs> and with, with non-duality, I keep thinking that sometimes I think, what if it's not even real, the whole thing, and I'm just wasting my time turning into a really weird person. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I used to feel like that, but I can guarantee you the reality that humans live in is not real.
but I can't, well, I, I can't guarantee yeah. you as in give you a certificate yeah. to re prove it, but I just, it's not real, the world that people live in, and they don't need to suffer like they suffer. Yeah, that, that's the bit I, I don't get yet. Because yeah. if you look at humanity, like if you really look around at people, even people that tell you that they're happy, most of humanity is not happy. Like even yeah. I was walking in my, um, this is, a, I'm in the town now that I grew up in, and I was walking there the other day, and I was just coming out of the bank, and I was like, ah, I felt so good. And I looked around at everyone, and everyone's faces were like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's particularly an English thing, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's, the whole of humanity is not happy, but because everybody's not happy, no one questions it. No one questions the fact that most people spend their time moaning. But I can't convince you of this. Like this is this. I know those thought patterns. I used to think that. It's just I used to think. I do know that about um, other people being unhappy, and it makes me as well. But I'm not exactly happy all the time myself. But it's, yeah. my, it's I've told you before. I find it harder to fit in and at work and stuff. But at the same time, not really. It's fine, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just thoughts coming up. Yeah. But, uh, then thoughts are never true. Even the stories that I tell you about non duality, they haven't really got a reality in them. They come and go. Yeah, it's all confusing, isn't it? Or for me. Well, there's one thing that isn't confusing, Sam, and that is that you're always awake. You never know sleep. There is always this aliveness. This is that, that's what never changes, and that's the key to it. And it's not intellectual, but there's always presence. This is always happening. There is always the knowing of this. Even in deep sleep, you only know um, you only know going to sleep and waking up. You never know deep sleep. There's always aliveness happening, and that's the key to it. Mm. That there is this presence, even when that you're you feel like it's really mundane or boring or like all these crazy thought patterns. The one thing that never changes, that's never confusing, is it's all known. It's all appearing and known. Mm. There's never a time that this isn't. It always is. Yeah, that's that's true. And that's where the that's that's where the answers are, and that's the non-confusing part. But but the person is addicted to living in what it knows intellectually, and that's why it suffers, and that's why it feels confused. Yeah. The awakeness is the key. The awakeness. What? The awakeness is the key. The knowing of this, the appearances, the life is the key. What's actually happening is the key. Yeah. I can see you're like, oh, my back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in a bad way over there. Well, just as a, um, I mean, I used to have so many back problems, I just don't have it anymore. It, I really think it's a sense of self, because I still oh, yeah. sleep all the bad ways that I do, but I remember when I was younger, I used to have such bad lower back and um, yeah. neck problems, my lower back, and I was never comfortable. I've had it for a long time, neck problems and posture problems and whole body discomfort. I've never really, since I was a kid, been comfortable inside my, like, in my body, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and things have got really hard recently, and that's why I question non duality and I think, well, how, you said you had this for two years or something, so have I really got to spend another few years feeling <laughs> really, really bad? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I don't know, but that's a stupid I just, question. No, I, I remember those sorts of things coming up, but I just was so, I knew that the freedom was, I knew so deeply that the freedom was there. And it was the, re the reason that I didn't feel it was because of myself. I just knew it. So I, even though I had questions and I had doubts, that was more about my sense of separation. But deep down, I always knew that there was a freedom here that always was. Yeah, and I experience things all the time and feel good. But is that just me as a person feeling like that? that yes, that is you as a person in a way, but your whole life there's been something there which has been free. Yeah. And that that isn't really about feeling good or feeling bad, but there's a remembering of an essence, that which is looking, that's always been there, this joy that's naturally been there, that's not been about getting, that's not been about you. Mm. I have a lot of time 
times when um, I feel like that, but yes. also I, I work a lot sometimes, or at least I work sometimes, and when I'm there, I sometimes think, is this the right thing to be doing? Like, I work as a support worker, like people with mostly learning difficulties and mental health problems, and it's, like I think about it more and more, and pretty much, it's not great, like, I can spend time with the people, and I, and, and that's nice, it's just, so, it's just talking to people for a job, but these people, in a way, like, they're locked in a place and just given drugs all the time. Yeah. And it makes me think, oh, this, and the atmosphere there, they, it feels a bit like a prison sometimes, you know? Yeah. But there's parts of the job I love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I understand what you're saying, and that, that side of things is a different exploration. Even if you work there or don't work there, there's still this awake freedom, this... Yeah, that's right. Work. But I understand what you mean about, about the job as well. Like, there is a sadness to the work you do in the sense that these... But there's also a beauty in it because sometimes people that are losing their mind can begin to see this freedom and know this freedom. So there's also beauty. <laughs> but everything in the world is... Of yeah, okay. It's a lot easier to talk, it's always been, has been for me, talking with some of the patients and the tenants where I worked and the staff, like they have less issues than a lot of other people. Because, <laughs> because sometimes when you, when you get to that point when you're put into hospital, they really have very little self-awareness left. And because mm. they've got very little self-awareness left, they're free to just say and do what they think, even if it's really neurotic or really compulsive or really weird to everyone else. Yeah. There is a sense of freedom there because they they can't even remember that they're acting odd or not in society standards. So there is yeah. a beauty there. And I always do have a sense that people that are having what we call mental health problems, I think that they're also having awakenings. There is also some, like their, their brain is breaking down what they think they know reality to be. But yeah. we don't support them in a very nice way in our society. I don't really like it either. No, that's right. But it's really beautiful. It, I can be imagine it's really beautiful for them interacting with someone like you as well. So everything has its plus and minus. That's nice. Yeah, I, I like to think they they like me. You know, I mean, we have a good time. But everyone there does as well. There's a, it's a crazy place. It's a madhouse. Yeah, <laughs> but there's some beauty in that. I mean, imagine working in an office. I mean, office is exactly. the worst madhouse. Yeah. Uh, at least everyone there, like, it doesn't, you don't have to be crazy to be there, yeah. but it helps, is what people say. <laughs> I don't know. But I also just mention things like that. I know it's nothing to do with freedom and what is and stuff, but I just mention it because I don't always know what to say when I'm talking to you, and I feel like I have to say something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. You never really have to say anything, though. I can't, I can't even really notice if we're speaking or not. I know that sounds really weird, but... It's yeah, you don't same. even register. Yeah. Mm. That's what I've been trying to imagine what it must be like if my sense of self completely wasn't there. Well, obviously, that's my sense of self is what's trying to imagine it, isn't it? Yeah. But I reckon you. I reckon if you look at some of the people that you're working with, you could see it in them a bit as well. But they're still very neurotic and they're kind of caught in the person, but in a different way. But they. They also have this collapse happening. Yeah, it's not like it's yeah. It's not like it's a personal thing to me. Mm. Kind of yeah. It is not yeah. That's right. What did I? But yeah, also I'm um I'm gonna come to the London talks, which should be nice. Why oh, nice? Yeah, yeah. I um. Book to hotel now. I'm gonna drive up. It should be quite nice. Hotel, the which sun hotel, did, hotel did you book? I tried the B and B one, but that was full. So it's like it's the one on your website, the hotel. Oh, yeah. It's not the B and B. Because isn't because I actually discovered another one, a B and B. Because close okay, by. Okay, I've paid for it now. All right. But yeah, thank you. Oh, the yeah. other the other hotel you're it staying in. It was quite is expensive. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really nice. It's really nice. Hotel. Is it? Oh, good. Yeah, I've got like, I think it's called a club room or something, so that would be nice. <laughs> it's right on the river as well. Is it? Thames River? Yeah, but yeah. that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, it should be nice. I need it. Well, I've had plenty of holiday this month, actually. I'm quite, yeah. I was going to say I need a holiday, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, well, nice to speak with you, Sam. Yeah, you too. And I should see you uh, in about a week, I think. Really? Nice, yeah. 
Okay, see you then. Thank you. Bye. I'm squeezing this underneath. I just love it. I want to bite it like Lisi does. <laughs> I really shouldn't squeeze this on my mum's sofa. It could be a disaster. Mm, it even feels nice on the skin. But it's down, Lisa. <laughs> Nick's here, Sam. So Nick's saying hello to you. Nick! What sort of picture is that? Hey, James. Look, I even have a formula of what you're talking about. I can't see it. Lisa, I want to talk. My God. Wow. Well, I have to look at this formula in a little bit, James. Okay, let's go. Do we have specific subjects when we talk? That would be nice. No. Well, we do. Non-duality. I am nothing. I am becoming one with everything now. Everything is limitating. Everything is many nothings is one. She's was <laughs> You always talk to the same people. I'm beginning to lose interest to talk to you. If everything is so beautiful, why you don't respond? I didn't see you, James. Look how many messages I sent to you for a month. Oh. Some people send more. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, where is the human connection? I'm sad about humans, Lisa. Self it is important. Okay, this has been a long talk. The, the reason I, I don't talk with you, James, um, it's nothing personal, but maybe I think it's better that you listen for a little longer, because at the moment I think that our language will be so different that um, it won't be such an easy conversation. This doesn't mean necessarily that we're talking about different things, but you've got to have a common language to be able to speak about it. Okay, guys, I'm off for my dinner now. Spend time with my parents. They've been making me laugh so much today. We went for an hour and a half walk, and they're so funny. It's no wonder where I got my humour from. <laughs> my parents are both called Ron. E. Ron or Ronnie. My mum is called originally Veronica, and my dad is called Ronald. And in England, we have something called the Two Ronnies, which are comedians, so I was walking with the Two Ronnies. <laughs> um, okay, so I shall see you Sunday at 5 p.m. British time. And um, on Sunday, you can really say it all because I'll only record the introduction. Then after that, I won't record it and you guys can say whatever you like. Maybe I'll be. Or maybe I won't. Thanks, guys. Bye.